Ria, who is CCNA certified and working in networking roles for two years, starts applying for jobs on LinkedIn, on Nokri, on Indeed. And after applying for 50 plus jobs, focusing on cloud, she finally gets one call. And that was for a cloud network engineer role. Then the interviewer was very impressed, by the way, because she had good experience on uh, traditional networking. She was CCNA certified. So she was CCNA already. And the interview starts. And the interviewer asks, OK, Ria, let's start with the OSI model. Can you tell me all the seven layers of OSI? And Ria was our subscriber. So she knew the acronym to quickly uh, recall what are those seven layers. She said in her mind, all people should try new Domino's pizza, which is all people should try new Domino's pizza. If we start from the down, it's physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation and application layer. And she talks about it briefly. An interviewer is impressed. Now interviewer asks a follow-up question. That's fabulous, Ria. Can you now tell me how you would apply this knowledge of OSI on cloud? Could you tell me that out of those seven layers, which layers hold the most importance on cloud? And whatever you know so far in traditional networking, is it enough? Or do you need to know something more? And that was the time when Ria got nervous because she was not expecting this question. So in this video, we'll try to break down this question. We'll try to understand that what kind of knowledge of the OSI model is actually required in 2025 for cloud. Because a lot of knowledge which we have already is from 2005, which is from traditional networking. And while that is a solid fundamental, you need to erase certain things from your mind or maybe skip it and add some new things which is very specific to cloud roles, be it a cloud network engineer or a cloud engineer. So in this video, we'll understand every layer in from the lens of a cloud networking role. What you need to know, what you need to forget, and what you need to know more. So let's draw out all the seven layers. We'll go one by one and we'll understand what is needed. And I tell you that if you stick around till the end of this video, we are, we're gonna focus on those two layers which has the capacity to 10x your package in the market because those two layers are the layers which will define what you do on cloud and will derive the most impact during your interviews so let's get started so friends i have just realized that i have made some technical errors while recording this video uh, while mapping traditional OSI with the cloud OSI. So I have kind of messed up with some of the services at certain layers and I don't want to confuse you. So this is a disclaimer that wherever I have done that, I will put a correction text. I really apologize for this mistake, but we all are humans and we make mistake. Uh, but I don't want to confuse you. So I'll put that text, but still this will be a very useful video for you to understand how things have changed in cloud. So yeah, please continue this video and I hope you will get some value out of it. So let's start with layer one. Layer one is your physical layer and in your CCNA, you spend a substantial amount of time learning about fibers, cables, signal attenuation, patch panels. All these are hardware side of networking. But do you need in, in cloud? The answer is no, you need to skip it. And that's the brutal answer because in cloud, you are not at all managing anything which is hardware because Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they maintain their own infrastructure and maintain 99.99% of uptime. So while you need to know how they have such a robust infrastructure by understanding what is a zone, what is a region, you know, how they create their availability zone, you need to know those constructs, but behind the scene, how they're delivering that, don't bother. In cloud, don't bother. That's not something which you should be spending your time with. If you know about it, it's a very good thing. But when you're focusing on cloud networking, I don't think this will be very fruitful. So even if you're learning, don't spend too much time understanding about the layer one, which is a physical layer. So coming to data link layer, which is layer two, we in traditional networking in CCNAs, we focus on VLANs, VLAN trunking, how switches work, how to configure MAC addresses, just at a high level I'm talking because every layer is a topic in itself. But when you move to cloud, the same VLAN concepts 
focuses more on the security groups because on cloud it is more on a policy based approach instead of you know configuring specific ports on a particular switch okay so when the interviewer would ask you certain questions think about policies think about how you will define your security groups so that uh, you know you can enable uh, communication between different cloud uh, resources or connecting to the external uh, network from the cloud so all that is governed by security groups uh, mac addresses moves to something which is called as enis which is elastic network interface something very similar to nic cards which we have in our devices so yeah this is a fundamental thing when you spin up a compute instance you will have an elastic network interface which will assign the mac address to that particular compute machine uh, the switches again uh, will go into virtual private cloud so you won't be just picking up and lifting and putting the switches into the network cabinet or configuring the switches by uh, connecting to the consoles you won't be doing it you won't be doing it you're primarily you will be working on the virtual private cloud because that is how you will define uh, your networking because now on cloud the networking has become software defined which is called as software defined networking we have made a specific video on software defined networking so you can check it out so yeah this is layer 2 but now unlike layer 1 in layer 2 your concepts will hold some value so you need to focus on whatever you are learning at layer 2 and definitely while it will not be a like for like thing a lot of concepts uh, learned here will be transformed on cloud so now coming to the bread and butter layer of every network engineer which is layer 3 the network layer and what we learn through ccna or th while working on traditional networking roles is primarily around subnetting routing routing protocols like ospf eie grp bgp nat all these kind of concepts by the way we have the whole playlist on networking the traditional networking and you can understand a lot of these concepts so i'll link that uh, in this video so you can check it out so when we go to the cloud the same concepts transforms into vpc cider design which is nothing but the same maths applied at a bigger scale and cidr uh, you must be knowing it's classless inter domain routing so you design your vpc and your cider ranges on cloud you have your route tables you have to understand what is nat gateway instead of doing you know exact natting you will have nat gateways So, for example, if you have your own uh, VPC and you have a public subnet and a private subnet, and if you have a EC2 instance here, which wants to connect to the internet via the public uh, subnet, then you will use NAT gateway within the private one. We have an extensive video on uh, AWS networking, uh, so you can check that out. So yes, this this layer is holds a lot of value. So whatever you have learned is very important. You have to keep it in your mind, and then. transform it as per cloud so this knowledge is not going anywhere so spend good time understanding this layer this layer is going to serve you really well if you can master this and then kind of understand these concepts on cloud you are good to go layer 4 is all about tcp and udp protocols okay so it's quite self explanatory we again have a video on tcp versus udp so you can watch it we will be linking the whole networking playlist for all the fundamentals on the traditional side so tcp udp now on the cloud networking side a lot of intelligence has been added so in here traditionally we, we used to have load balancers and simple health checks now i understand cisco devices are now becoming more intelligent and a lot of things are being done here as well but on cloud you have now have alb's which are application load balancers then you have nlb which is network load balancer and you have concepts like sticky session you have different kinds of algorithm to manage the load and uh, you also have connection draining for example so connection draining these concepts help you manage the load better so yeah you have this concept here and then you have the concept of target group cross zone load balancing and everything is now software defined you just have to configure it using cloud and when i say cloud even then you have to and now this is i'm moving out of this layer but in totality everything now whatever you do would be generally uh, done using infrastructure as a code which will be done through products like terraform uh, you won't be just doing it configuring it on gui while that could be a good starting point for you as a basic beginner as you will progress you will have to you know do it through scripts and uh, by the way if you are new to cloud you want to have those stepping stones then we have uh, our own course which is aws jumpstart and where we 
try to build your cloud fundamentals and also try to make you a, a generative AI cloud expert where you learn how to use generative AI to build your first steps on cloud. So we cover all the core services from overall cloud. It's not very networking focused, but yes, networking is one of the core concepts of that course. So you can check it out. Link will be in the description. A very important layer because now a lot of things which we are doing are microservices based. Who are having these microservices architecture where all kind of load balancing concepts become really, really critical. So that's why this transport layer uh, becomes really important uh, to understand. But when we go to the cloud networking, these are some concepts which you have to do the add on. So focus on this layer, spend good time but then you have to extend your knowledge towards this, okay? So in traditional networking, if you are coming from CCNA background, it barely scratches the surface of session management because that's not the core networking work which you do, okay? But now as we are moving to cloud, we have to evolve, we have to move up in this whole layered stack and know more about how we manage sessions. So now previously it was basic stateful sessions which we used to manage, but now we are using stateless as we are going to microservices design patterns we need to not only manage but control the sessions okay and that's why we have OAuth protocol JSON web tokens we use API gateways to connect through different APIs and then generally these are stateless uh, connections which we maintain and while you as a network professional on cloud might not be needed it because it is more cloud architect level of knowledge if you can do this if you can spend some time and come up with this then you are actually creating that edge compared to other network engineers who are coming from traditional background because they would be not working or not having that enough knowledge about this particular layer. So yes, you can spend some time learning about this through AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, see how this is done. It might not be coming handy in your day-to-day -day job, uh, even on cloud, but yeah very good because it could be your pathway towards a cloud architect role talking about layer six which is the presentation layer okay it is all about encryption how you encrypt your different data and here is when you understand about ssl secure socket layer or tls which encrypts your whatever data is being transported through the network and while this is uh, learned at a basic level in in our traditional networking here it is very very important because in cloud it becomes a very important paradigm and a very important skill to master and that's why if you're applying for any role on cloud specifically around networking it's a very good to have skill of understanding how you can do an end-to-end -end tls and ssl throughout your communication on cloud and for that you need to understand the concept which is called as CLM, which is Certificate Lifecycle Management. So SSL certificates, generally we used to manage it manually, but now we have tools, we have different uh, products uh, which offer this end to end and you don't have to do anything. Those products will manage all this by themselves. So, uh, so those products will continuously monitor all the certificates. They will keep an eye on uh, any certificate which is expiring, making sure they are rotating the keys of those certificates every one year, every six months or every month. Because sometimes what used to happen in previous old days were that your certificate has expired, but you have no clue about it. You have forgot about it because there are so many certificates which you use every day. Pretty much every website you access within your network network or maybe in public network is having an SSL certificate, the lock icon, the padlock which you see. So for that, you have a global sign which provides you these certificates, but now you have AWS which could generate certificates uh, internally on AWS. You have Azure Key Vault where you can securely protect your keys uh, which are required for those certificates. So all these concepts are very good in future if you want to progress into a security kind of thing. And even if you don't want to, Having this in your armory as a you know cloud network person or a cloud network expert will be always very good. So spend good time understanding these concepts. So coming to the final layer, which is the topmost layer, layer seven, which is the presentation layer in traditional networking in CCNA, we focus on understanding protocols, which are HTTP, HTTPS, domain name service, which is DNS. Again, videos are there in the playlist. We'll attach it. Coming to the cloud networking, these same concepts then converts into concepts such as CDN, which is content delivery network, okay? And then you also have WAF, which is web application firewall. So all these concepts become really important because now you are delivering content exactly where the user resides. 
and that's why you need to understand your content delivery network uh, how you can you know maybe uh, successfully store some static content of your application right at where the user resides because cloud is everywhere the data centers of aws azure and microsofts are everywhere so cdn web application firewall again becomes a very important concept in securing the traffic becomes a very important thing and the third thing which you need to understand here is zero trust we have made a video on zero trust architecture which basically means that your security architecture should trust nobody nobody so we have made a very quick simple video of it so you can watch it so zero trust architecture you need to focus on so it is more around securing and delivering content quickly so friends now comes the real question which we were waiting for which are those two layers which will hold the maximum value during your interviews or in your cloud networking career and those two layers are and you might be surprised because you must be thinking oh we should be focusing on these two layers or these two layers but no these layers are still compared to traditional networking and the cloud networking still these two layers are layer 3 and layer 4 these are your golden layers guys be it traditional networking or be it cloud networking yes you will have new concepts which you need to learn but when you are studying you have to spend good 60 to 70 i'll give you 60 percent of your time here these two layers are the most important and the good thing is if you are in ccna even in ccn or traditional networking these are the layers which you have to focus the most so this is our priority one in priority two our data link layer where you should spend maybe 20 percent of your time or i would say not 20 percent i think in fact 30 percent if you are targeting cloud core cloud networking roles but here there could be people who would be uh, targeting cloud engineer or cloud architect for them this ratio might differ but then if if you are just focusing on cloud networking uh, kind of role then layer 5 6 7 although these are important layers you should be spending 10% of your time here and you have to completely skip layer 1 while studying okay so first priority your layer 3 and layer 4 then layer 2 and then layer 5 6 7 but as you move along these layers will become more important i am telling you this if you're going into cloud architect career, if you're going into a security kind of a career, you have to advance in these layers as well. So yes, guys, I hope this is a useful video. Again, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe, press the bell icon. Let us know in the comment what you want to learn next in networking. As I said, you can watch our whole networking playlist. It is also uh, added as a course on our YouTube channel. So you can just brush up all your networking knowledge in very easy to understand language and yeah if uh, this was a useful video let me know and uh, we'll make similar videos in future as well so until next time keep learning keep sharing and keep hustling bye for now